Rick, speaking of those Broncos that are undefeated, they're also trying to go 7-0 and and will host the undefeated Packers on Sunday night. It'll be just the fourth matchup of 6-0 and teams in NFL history in the first since 2007 when the Patriots beat Peyton Manning and the Colts. In the previous two instances, the team that won the game went on to lose the Super Bowl that year. Stephen A., who are you going with? I'm going to go with that bad man. That's Aaron Rodgers. Of course. I have, not, I have not been pleased. I have not been pleased at what I've seen from Green Bay. Their offense has looked a bit sluggish. Obviously, uh, with Eddie Lacy not 100%, Jordy Nelson being gone, uh, Randall Cobb, Nixon Nax here and there, uh, there are definitely some legitimate big-time questions about the Green Bay Packers, and I'm willing to concede that the Denver Broncos legitimately should be favored to win this game. But because of the struggles that I've seen in their offense, combined with Clay Matthews' ability to get to the quarterback, the combination of all of that along with the way their defense can play from time to time themselves, again, I think it'll be a tight fort contest. And if it's a tight fort contest, then I'm going to bet my, my money on Aaron Rodgers to pull through. Denver's defense is no joke. I respect that. I understand it. Uh, they are legit in every way, shape, form, and fashion. I'm very impressed with them. Their secondary is obviously elite with Aqib Tlaib and Chris Harris, who I think deserve a lot of love. But if there is somebody that's potential, that has the potential to neutralize uh, what they may bring to the table, I think it's Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be tough. He shouldn't be the favorite. He, he's definitely not my favorite. But I believe that somehow, some way, he will find a way to win this game. Denver's the better team thus far. No question about it, but I think their offense has struggled and has been too inconsistent for this not to be a tight, hard-fought contest. And if it is a tight, hard-fought contest, I think being on the road instead of the friendly confines of Lambeau Field, I think is going to elevate the level of urgency for the Green Bay Packers. I think they will respond in kind, and I think they will find a way to pull out this win. I'm picking Green Bay to win this game 27-26. 27 26 wait a second you, you just said this game's at denver i i did not know that i i thought green bay played every game this year at home am i wrong <laughs> it, this is at this is actually in denver this is in denver man they're this making the green denver. bay packers go on the road <laughs> yes, oh, this, this oh is well, that changes skin. everything <laughs> okay okay now i got it now i got it right, right just right. because it's in denver and just because look Stephen A., we all know what the truth here is. The baddest man in pro football is the number 12 in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's Tom Brady. He looks that way right now. You're a bad man. Yeah, well, he, he just is. I'm sorry. But the bad man that has been Aaron Rodgers has occasionally this year been shockingly simply bad. I don't know what's wrong with him, but he hasn't been right sometimes this year, even though the record is pristine. I, I have no quarrel with the record. I also point out to you, the bad man Aaron Rodgers defense is ranked number one in the National Football League in points allowed. Number one above, just above the Denver Broncos. So Aaron Rodgers has gotten a lot of help from the other side of the ball this year. And I think it's really helped save him a couple of times. But in this game, in Denver, at night, I'm going with Peyton Manning. And I agree with you. I think it'll be a hard-fought, defensive-oriented battle. I'm going to go with Peyton 20-17 to 17 because for all the gnashing of teeth out there and the wringing of hands about Peyton Manning in his decline, in his last year maybe in, in pro football, as his QBR, scale of 0 to 100, plummets to 46th in the league, which is 25th below Jameis Winston, seven touchdown passes, to 10 interceptions for Peyton Manning, the record is still 6-0. and zero. When Peyton Manning has had to make late plays, as we saw at Kansas City against their division arch rival, he has made the throws he had to make. I believe in a defensive battle, he will make the throws he will have to make to win this game. Again, 20-17, to 17, very low scoring. But I'll leave you with this, Stephen A., Aaron Rodgers, all time in road primetime games, is three and eight. Now his QBR has been high. He's been very efficient, but his record is three and eight. Peyton Manning, since he joined the Broncos in primetime games, home primetime games, is eight and one. 
He's thrown 28 touchdowns in those games to one interception. I think he will rise and shine in a home primetime game, even against Aaron Rodgers, who obviously at this point is playing at a little higher level than Peyton Manning. I think you're going to see the best of Peyton Manning in this game, and it will just barely be enough for the home team to win. Well, Skip Bayless, can I tell you something? Um, we will concede that a a Tom Brady looks absolutely phenomenal this year, and we'll give him credit where credit is due. But despite the absence of Jordy Nelson, having Richard Rodgers just really, really gaining some traction at the tight end spot, Randall Cobb not being 100%, Eddie Lacy not being 100%, um, Skip Bayless, I just want to throw out that even though they have the 22nd ranked passing attack, because obviously there's some things, to, there's some things to work out. If you are in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers is completing 68.1% of his passes. He's got 15 touchdowns, just two interceptions, and a QBR of 80. I just wanted to point that out. I mean, while we sit up here and we're talking, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I left out another little, just slightly little thing that I might add. Their record is the same as the New England Patriots. They, 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 they're they're 6 0, too. Mm -hmm. So while you're sitting there and talking about Aaron Rodgers and just summarily dismissing, you know, some of the stuff, I'd like to add that despite all those struggles that are valid, because he certainly hasn't looked like himself, he hasn't looked like the bad man I know him to be. I'm going to repeat it. He's completing 68% of his passes. He's got 15 touchdowns and just two interceptions. And one of those interceptions were bogus, okay? Then we've got the 80 QBR out of 100 because that's your stat, not mine. That's the one you love. That's the one you love. That was the one that means everything to Skip Bayless, okay? And so I'm just looking at that. I just wanted to point that out. And by the way, the quarterback rating, a stat that I care about that you summarily dismissed, it's, it's, it's 115. I'm talking about this is this is a bad this is a bad I, I don't even know I, I, what that means I, I, I'm just saying I'm just saying well if you don't know what it means nobody does because nobody studies it more than you so don't ask me what it means if you don't know what it means but I'm going to tell you this I'm going to repeat it 68 percent completion 15 touchdowns just two interceptions all right a quarter uh, uh, you know a rating of 115 and a QBR of 80 out of 100 with an identical record to Tom Brady I just want to say that I mean, I mean, I know that you, I know that everything is, is Tom Brady. The sun shines and sets with Tom Brady. I mean, my goodness, he can do no wrong. I mean, he's the closest thing to perfection that we've seen since Lord knows what. No, I get it. he's I told there. You, I told, he, he's he is there. perfection. He's there. He's, there. He's, there. he's there. There's nothing. I mean, he's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's got Giselle. All Aaron Rodgers has is, is, is Olivia Munn. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I suppose that's shabby I, I don't in even your care world. about that. I, I suppose that's shabby in your world. Ain't shabby in mine. I'm just saying to you that everything you point out, it, it's amazing to me. You you would think that Aaron Rodgers is Alex Smith or, or, or Colin Kaepernick or somebody. Yeah, that's what you would think. He's Aaron Rodgers. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to point that out. It ain't perfect. It ain't Tom Brady. But, but the record's the same. Man, I just want to throw that out there. Just, I, I, I'm not I sure you remember you this. that. I'm not sure you remember that. I just want to say. He used to be Aaron Rodgers. Mm. And I'm going to cancel all your little golden nuggets with just one. Mm. So far, through six games, mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers has only one 300-yard passing game. So? Only one. So what? Hmm. He's 6-0. and up. He's 6 up. And oh, by the well, way, I love, hold on, I love, see, I love this about you. So now that he's quote unquote struggling, despite those superlatives I threw out there, you sat up there and said he was once Aaron Rodgers, but look at what he's doing now. But when he was Aaron Rodgers, you weren't willing to acknowledge that then. But now that he's struggling, you're willing to acknowledge it. Nobody engages in revisionist history better than Skip Bayless. Nobody no. modifies it. Nobody edits <laughs> it. Nobody does start. any of that better no. than Skip. When he was Aaron Rodgers wrong. and destroying wrong, the wrong, league, wrong. you were like, oh, it was Tom Brady then. It was Tom Brady then. I'm just saying. I'm just it saying. It was. Okay. And, okay. and, and it always right. was Tom Brady. Right. But I gave you, look, Aaron Rodgers is really good. But he just ain't Tom Brady, and he never has been. I wasn't and on the show with give you. Give it up. I wasn't on the show with you at that time. But even back in 2010, when he won the Super Bowl, I used to watch you on first take, and he wasn't. He won. He won. He won. Aaron Rodgers then to you. He, you know, he was. He paled in comparison to Tom Brady then. 
It did nothing. He's league MVP. Don't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter what he does. You, you know, you always said the same thing. Now you're using these first six games in which he's undefeated, in which the quarterback rating is 115, in which the QBR is 80. Even now, you want to sit there and say, oh, he's not doing this. I get it. That was legitimate. But when it wasn't, you still detach legitimacy to it because that would get in the way uh, uh, of, of, your, uh, of your laudables towards Tom Brady. Go figure. I'm so surprised, Skip. I'm so surprised. It's very, very touching to watch out. you do this. Didn't, didn't you just admit a little earlier in this conversation that clearly Tom Brady is better than Aaron Rodgers now? I said, no, I said clearly Tom Brady is having a better game through the first six seasons this year than Aaron Rodgers. He looks better right now. These first six games. Looks better? He looks better right now. These first six have, games. It's 10 have more you to go. Ever, it's 10 more to go. Have you ever, ever, ever seen a quarterback play at a higher level than number 12 in Foxborough is playing right now? Mm, it's debatable. Some ever. would say Joe Montana. Whatever, no, but I would no, say, I, you have I would not. Say, I would say I would say I, I would say no. I would say no at this point at Thank this you. particular moment in time. Next question. You know, but I've seen Aaron Rodgers look pretty damn great. And I and, and, and there's no question about that. Tom Brady is just having a better year thus far. That's all. All right. So both of the guys are expecting a close one, but Stephen A is riding with the Packers, skip with the Broncos. With a win, Peyton Manning would tie Brett Favre for most wins ever by a starting quarterback. Up next, a guy who's caught quite a few touchdowns from number 18. Pierre Garcon is ready and waiting. He's in the household. Join us after the break. Finally, I need some company here. Back in a minute. <laughs> 